Dan, have you heard from other commission members about their uh, ability to attend this morning? Um, yes. Um, I, mean, I know Ms. Tratt is unavailable, but we're expecting everyone else. So um, we should probably just give another just a couple minutes. Uh, are we at, are we at quorum that, yet? N not yet. So. Um, all right, I'll stand by. Yeah, I'll keep I'll keep an eye out. And as soon as we we have the uh, the numbers, we, we can get started. It looks like Michelle just joined. I think we still need one more though. Okay. All right. It looks like um, looks like we are good now. So. Uh, you know, whenever you want to kick things off, you can you can go through the preamble, and I'll do roll call and the procedures. All right, thank you, Dan. Um, good morning, everyone. Bob Strickland, Vice Chair of the Landmarks Commission. I'll be chairing the meeting this morning. Good to see everyone, although it continues to be virtually. In compliance with notification requirements of Ohio's open meeting law and section 101.021 of the codified ordinances of Cleveland, Ohio, 1976, notice of this meeting has been publicly posted. All boards and commissions under the purview of the city planning department conducts its meetings according to Robert's rules of order. Actions during the meeting will be taken by voice vote. Abstentions from any vote to a conflict of interest should be stated for the record prior to the taking of any vote. To ensure that everyone participating in the meeting has the opportunity to be heard, we ask that you use the raised hand feature before asking a question or making a comment. The raised hand feature can be found in the participants panel on the desktop and mobile version and activated by clicking the hand icon. Please wait for the chair or facilitator to recognize you and be sure to select unmute and announce yourself before you speak. When you finish speaking, please lower your hand by clicking on the raised hand icon again and mute your microphone. We will also be utilizing the chat feature to communicate with participants. 
The chat feature can be activated by clicking the chat button located on the bottom of the WebEx screen. Call-in users can unmute by using star six. All meeting activity is being recorded via the WebEx platform. These proceedings are also being live streamed via YouTube. All requests to speak on a particular matter via, via our website, email, and phone number have been considered. We have also received emails from those who have provided written comment on a particular matter. Any and all communications with members of this body that are not communicated during the meeting of this body and or do not follow procedures for public comment established by this body are unwelcome and will be disregarded. Dan, if you want to review the uh, virtual meeting rules and procedures. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, so the chair will call each agenda item and then each applicant will be invited to proceed through their presentation. Each presentation should be completed prior to questions and comments from the commission in order to facilitate a smooth presentation. Once the presentation is concluded, the chair will ask Landmark staff to summarize design review committee recommendations and any public comment received. The deadline for public comment is noon on the Tuesday prior to any regularly scheduled Clean Landmarks Commission meeting. Any received comments are distributed to the commission members prior to the meeting. Staff will also identify any members of the public present and scheduled to speak. Public comment is allowed at the discretion of the chair and any individual providing public comment is permitted two minutes to speak to the agenda item in which they have an interest. The chair will then request a recommendation from staff. The commission will then begin deliberations and project review. Any commission member except the chair may make a motion at any point after an agenda item has been called. Thank you, Dan. Uh, we'll now call the April 27th, 2023 Landmarks, Cleveland Landmarks Commission meeting to order. Uh, Dan, please call the roll. Ms. Anderson? Here. Mr. Benezzi? Here. Mr. Kalikia? Here. Mr. Dreyer? Here. Mr. Edmund? Here. Councilwoman Gray? Director Wong? Here. Mr. Strickland? Here. Mr. Trasic? Here. And Ms. Trott? All right, Mr. Chair, we have a quorum. In addition to the commission members, we have Kevin Roberts, our representative from the law department, as well as Jessica Beam, Carl Burgess, and myself from the Landmarks office present. All right, thank you, Dan. Now uh, we'll move on to certificates of appropriateness. The first case is case number 23036, Grantwood Allotments Historic District, 10518 Grantwood Avenue Window Replacement. Would the representative for this project please introduce yourself and tell us about your project? Is the applicant present? Carol or Dan, do you Mr. see the applicant? Chair, I don't, I don't see the, um, the applicant on the list of, of current participants. So um, if we want to move on to the next one, we can push this to the back. We'll move on to the next one. Can I make a motion to table? Hello, my name is Dawn with Window Nation. Um, oh, okay. I am present. Are we talking about the Grant Wood Avenue Andre Jackson project? Yes. Okay, I'm sorry. I didn't have the address in front of me, so I wasn't sure of his address. So ours, I think, is a pretty simple request. Um, Could you please customer... introduce yourself again, please? Yes, Dawn Toth with Window Nation. Thank you. So the customer has contracted for replacement windows of vinyl style. And I know traditionally you guys don't approve vinyl, so I guess that's the the big posing question: Are we allowed to put vinyl in the front of this 
uh, homeowner's home. Um, he is not willing to spend more money and does not want wood windows. So that's why we're here. All right, so is that the extent of your presentation? Yeah, there's really nothing other that needs to be discussed. I guess in a prelim meeting, they talked about some French casements with leaded glass that they wanted the homeowner to donate. But other than that, it's really just approving vinyl um, versus wood. All right, thank you. Dan, do we have a design review committee report? Yes, I think Jessica, um, do you want to give the design review committee report? Absolutely. Um, so this project was reviewed by the Magnolia Wade Park East Boulevard Grantwood Allotments Design Review Committee on the 6th. Um, they did not have quorum, so they were not able to take a vote. They did discuss a preference on window material in historic districts, which is aluminum clad wood, fiberglass or composite um, and not vinyl. On the front of homes, uh, they did discuss also retaining casement windows or donating those for local use um, because there are existing casement windows with uh, decorative panes or leaded glass, and also a conversation on replacing windows with the same configuration. Uh, that is, the front windows um, remain in that same style and not go to traditional double hung windows. Um, and yeah, they were not able to take a vote. All right, thank you. And uh, we have a staff report. Yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, so staff does not recommend approval of the current proposal. Um, if the applicant is willing to make some changes specifically to retain the leaded glass windows and upgrade the materials on the front to either fiberglass or aluminum, and also you know, maintaining the configuration of all existing windows, if they're willing to make those changes and come back, staff feels that tabling the project to allow time to make those changes would be appropriate. Um, if the applicants are not willing to alter the proposal, then staff would recommend disapproval. Right. Uh, in order to follow the recommendation to table <coughs> this uh, certificate for appropriateness, the applicant would have to agree to tabling this. If you do not agree to tabling, then uh, we'll open our deliberations and uh, ultimately take a vote. So would the applicant agree to tabling this project so that the owner can consider the recommendations from staff and the design review committee? We've, uh, we've gone to the customer and the customer does not want wood windows in the front that he wants the vinyl line. So I guess at this point of vote, you guys will approve vinyl. If not, we'll go back and tell him he can't have the vinyl windows. Right. So um, you want us to proceed with our deliberations and then take a vote rather than tabling? I mean, yes, I would say take a vote. Okay, I'm, I'll open it up for the commission's comments. Can I, this is Joyce Wong. Um, can I ask a clarifying question? I've heard from the applicant that the property owner is not interested in wood windows, but there are also alternatives that were mentioned such as aluminum or composite um, to the applicant. Is Do you have a sense of, it, you know, are they open to other materials or would you just prefer to move towards a vote? I do not know if he's open to other materials, but we would, as a, the contractor, not be able to provide him a composite or a fiberglass window. Oh, that's, that's right. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Anderson? That was my question, was whether Window Nation has a composite or wood windows. Apparently, they do not. So, um, well, let me clarify. If I could clarify, we do have a wood window line, but the customer is not willing to pay more for the wood window. And obviously, wood windows cost substantially more than vinyl. Yes. Yeah, I understand that. Okay. All right. That's good to know. Thank you. All right. Are there any other commission comments? 
If not, I'll add my comments here that uh, been well established. We we treat every uh, applicant on a case by case basis, but uh, as a general rule, and would apply here, uh, we would follow the recommendation of the design review committee and staff for the requirement of a composite window or a uh, vinyl or an aluminum clad wood window and following the um, character and the profile of the existing windows for any replacement window. So with that, I'll ask uh, the commission if someone would like to propose a motion. I ask a clarifying question first, I, I apologize. Is, does this wood window requirement pertain only to the front of the house and vinyl is allowed on the sides and the back? Or is yes, this that would, house? That would uh, I believe that's consistent with the recommendations. So if, if you want the owner to consider that as an option, we still are open to tabling this to give the owner and you a chance to review different options and present an alternative application. Okay, so if you vote, we can never come back to talk about this again? You'd have to come back with a different project. I see, okay. So then let's go ahead and table it. Let me have that discussion for the other side and back of the house and see if he's um, receptive to that. That's All the right. best suggestion I, I have for this point. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. So okay. I accept a motion to table. This is Joyce. I propose a motion to table this uh, project. Uh, we have a motion to table. Do we have a second? Second from Alan. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion on the motion? Uh, Dan, please uh, take a vote and announce the results. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Ms. Anderson? Yes. Mr. Benezzi? Yes. Mr. Clickia? Yes. Mr. Dreyer? Yes. Mr. Edmund? Yes. Uh, Director Wong? Yes. Mr. Strickland? Yes. And Mr. Trasic? Yes. Mr. Chair, the motion to table passes unanimously. All right, thank you. And to the applicant, we um, look forward to you discussing this project further with your client and uh, presenting another uh, solution. Thank you. Okay, thank you. We'll move on to the second case, case number 23037, Woodland Ave Bathhouse, uh, Woodland Recreation Center, 9206 Woodland Avenue, renovations and addition. Would the applicant please introduce themselves and tell us about your project? Mr. Chair, just quickly, this is Carter Edmund. I'm going to be recusing myself from this project. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My name is Mark Dulek. I am the Section Chief for Architecture here at the Division of Architecture and Site Development at the City of Cleveland. And I'm really uh, proud to present our design proposal for uh, renovations and additions to the uh, Woodland Avenue Recreation Center, formerly the Woodland Avenue Bathhouse. Also present is Nancy Nozick from Branstetter Carroll, who is our architect of record, and Katie Chu, who is our project manager uh, here at DASD. Um, we're coming back because we have completely revised the design from a proposal that was done, uh, now it's going on four years ago. Um, next slide, please. Just to familiarize everybody with the location, um, it's on Woodland Avenue at the corner of East 93rd. Next, please. And these are just a series of slides showing where it is as far as the Opportunity Corridor now crosses Woodland Avenue um, and crosses 93rd. So it's always on that corner. So this is just a series of slides giving you some context. I apologize, some of these are not updated in terms of the aerials, but uh, the site itself and the building itself has not changed, though the context is a little different because of the Carter. That's zeroing in on the site, and this shows the areas we're going to be impacting. This is the 
one of the historic photos of the bathhouse not too long after it was built. And this is these are just the floor plans. You can see just for, for point of interest here, since this is landmarks, this is a Cleveland landmark, of course. Um, this building was very efficiently designed. There's very little circulation. You either have rooms or you have stairs. In fact, you had to go through the shower rooms to get from the lobbies to the gymnasium. This is the main floor. Uh, and this is the second floor. Um, you can see that the second floor, the two halves of it are completely separated as well. You'd have to go up the front stairs or up the back stairs to get to the second level track in the gym. This building is very much intact and we are endeavoring to um, save as much of the character both inside and outside as we possibly can. Next, please. That just shows you the section showing you how that was arranged conceptually, but the the waiting rooms and the clinic areas above on the second floor at the northerly portion of the building, all the shower rooms, and then the gymnasium with the track. And then down in the basement, we have this lovely little spa-like swimming pool. Um, next, please. Um, is there shots showing you the exterior character? Um, we have just completed the replacement of the tile roof um, as approved earlier, utilizing the synthetic Brava tile system. Um, if you're going by, please take a look. I think the roof came out very nicely. Next, please. This is the site plan showing how we're going to have, be having a new parking area and drop off, uh, what we call the Great Lawn, which is really a gathering space, both for the center, for community events, but also in between the waiting areas uh, for the different groups of people because the water play in the pool will get extremely busy during the summertime. This is a place where people hang out and picnic between the groups that can come because there's a limited number in the water play area. But we're creating a new entrance to really address this whole um, series of spaces as well as the parking and the entrance, really creating that new entrance. Um, but they're still very visible from the street. We'll take you through a series of uh, pictures. Next, please. This is just a quick overview of the renovation. As I mentioned, the roof is done. Uh, I'll punch list anyways. And um, this shows the uh, uh, areas to come of what we're going to do in terms of replacing the roof. And then it really is about the creation of this new entrance. Next, please. That's that elevation that will be facing the new parking lot on the Great Lawn. Next, please. And this just outlines the prime intervention. This is where we're creating that new lobby. Again, there was really no, there's no circulation in the building per se. Um, so the idea is opening this up so that not only can you see inside, but that from the inside you can see towards the outside. So this is not on the street facade, but this is on our new, uh, on the west facade of the building. Next, please. And that shows our an elevation of our proposed new glassy entrance that provides that uh, level of transparency and really creates the new lobby. It does also show we are making the building fully accessible. So that is our uh, new elevator shaft there on the left. Next, please. This is the south elevation, which remains substantially unchanged other than we are um, replacing the mechanical equipment to provide uh, new HVAC systems for the gymnasium and for the pool underneath it. Next, please. This is the uh, east elevation. This is along the street. The doors that are there are original, which we are going to actually put new doors with glass on the transom in there right now. Um, and there were some windows that were put in. What we're proposing to do is using the reclaimed brick from the uh, west wall that we're going to be taking down. We are proposing to remove those windows and restore that brick wall back to what its original appearance was along East 93rd Street. Next, please. This is the Woodland Avenue facade. The major change here is we are keeping the that leftward entrance as a means of egress from the building because there is a stair there. Um, this is what you would see from the street, but we are reclaiming the other current existing entrance um, as an office area for uh, for staff. So we are keeping the exterior, but we are infilling that with new uh, storefront. Next, please. Just a quick view of the plans for point of interest, showing how we're reusing the existing space, creating a, a new fitness area that's going to be very 
spa-like down in the basement. We're not having large locker rooms. We're using individual toilet rooms and areas rather than separator rooms for weights and fitness. And then, of course, we're going to be renovating the pool. Next, please. This does show the main entrance. It shows that wall that goes across just above the word lobby. That's where that wall is now. That wall comes out and we're really creating a gracious entrance, a lobby. We're opening up because there's a skylight above us, opening up to let light below. And then we're creating that same kind of uh, circulation around. And that shows you where the elevator is tucked as close to the middle of the building um, as we can. But we are really doing our best to maintain the, the game room and the former uh, men's and women's waiting room as a usable space. Next, please. This shows how we're uh, basically renovating the upstairs, uh, keeping the track, but we will have arts and multi-purpose and gaming up above as well as small offices. So the substantially unchanged other than the addition of that elevator and vestibule and adding of toilet rooms on the second floor, of course. We are removing the easterly skylight as well, and that will be where our uh, mechanical units will be stacked as, again as close to the middle of the building as we can, but we need that room for our new rooftop units. Next, please. A little bit of history. This was the 2019 submission that was approved by the Landmarks Commission at the time. Um, this was very much driven by the desire of the councilman and recreation at the time to connect to the water park and enclose the water park. This was the basic submission that created a gallery along the gym. Again, because he, there was no circulation in the building, it had to be created if we wanted to have that new locker room and accessibility to the pool. Next slide, please. You can see that that was to enclose the water park so that it was a year round uh, community amenity. Uh, next. This shows what the base project was. And if for the next slide, please, it shows what would be enclosing the water park. Um, next slide shows you what our current proposal is going to be. As you can see, it's much more modest. We feel it's much more appropriate and we're very excited about the opportunity to not only create a new entrance um, for accessibility, we're actually sloping up one in 20 walks rather than having a separate accessibility ramps and really trying to respect the inherent symmetry of the building as well as the character of the building and really downplay the entrance in terms of projecting forward rather than creating a lot of height. And you can see how the drop off and parking work and how there's a sequence of spaces that can lead you to almost like a porch that has this glass box on it. Next, please. This is from farther down Woodland. As soon as you pass Farmhouse Foods, you'll see the, the parking lot and you'll see the building, you'll see the whole facade and um, where the new entrance is. Next, please. This is a view coming going west on Woodland Avenue, going across 93rd. So you can see where, the, where we're healing that brick wall and you can see how the uh, facade will be restored along that to its original appearance. Next, this is that view from the uh, edge of the Great Lawn showing the relationship of the different planes of, uh, of glass and how you'll be able to see into the center and how that uh, blue elevator shaft um, with our, our recreation, our kind of trademark branded blue brick uh, for recreation facilities. We're using this at several facilities and it uh, uh, we like how it signifies Cleveland recreation, but also this would be visible uh, through the glass rather than an exterior. And we took that exterior elevator and basically moved it into the middle of the building so that it still has that presence, but isn't, isn't the defining element of the entry. We wanted that to be the glass vestibule. Next, please. That shows you just a little farther back, so how they all all the elements work together in terms of a composition and how they relate to the uh, existing building and how that the idea of that great lawn is a gathering space. Next, please. That's the uh, existing playground, um, and that shows how those windows will be healed, but that shows the how the uh, elevator comes through the roof uh, to serve the second floor. Next. That's again the view from the corner as you walk around the building. So from the corner and from Woodland, the uh, elevator shaft would actually not be visible. Next. 
this shows that uh, office conversion and how we plan to infill it with the uh, with the glass. We looked at two different colors, um, but we are going towards the dark spandrel. Next slide, please. Going towards the darker spandrel. Again, the steps will be there almost like a little seating area, but we wanted to make it feel that though this was not an entrance we wanted, and it was clearly new, um, we wanted to keep the character of the, of the opening. Next. This just shows some of the site furnishings we're planning to use, pretty much the city of Cleveland standards, uh, simple and uh, modern and transitional. Next, please. These are our materials. We're using some burnished block for the base of the glass uh, entry materials there, and that is our uh, Bermuda blue brick. Next. This shows some of this shows the signage that we're proposing, very minimal. Um, there's the existing uh, monument sign that's our uh, recreation standard. Um, and then some directional sign on the front because we are changing the entrance. But then we will have the address number on the, the glass vestibule above the main entrance door. Next. Here's our landscape plan. Um, we want some trees that will have a nice scale. The goal is to have trees with uh, substantially height, substantial height underneath the bottom of the canopy in both the parking lot and those areas, and to really um, define the great lawn almost like columns, but to keep the visibility open to the entrance and to keep it clean and open from the street where you come up those sloping walkways, both from the street and then going back to the pool. Next. This is our site lighting plan. We are having these, we're actually going to make these taller, these 12 footers, they're going to be 16 feet above that. But then we're having our uh, our parking lot lights. So the whole area will be very well lit for safety and also for the visibility of the building. Next, please. And that is just showing another version of how the site lighting plan works in context. There's existing lighting for the pool, water play, and et cetera. So, but this shows the new lighting we're planning to put in. And uh, these are the fixtures. The parking lot fixtures are city standard modern LED fixtures. Then for the pedestrian lighting, we're using something with a little bit more tactile character to it. Again, a kind of transitional design. Um, they'll be white. Um, next, please. And that's, uh, that's our presentation. Um, thank you, and we welcome your questions and comments. All right, thank you very much for the presentation. Dan, can we have uh, the design review report, please? I'll take that. Um, the project was reviewed by the uh, East Region Design Review Committee on April 11th. They approved the project with conditions to use the dark spandrel glass in the door. They'll become inoperable and treat it in a way that visitors don't think it's a usable entry and to utilize white as the color for the new site and parking lot fixtures, um, both of which were um, mentioned in the presentation. All right, thank you very much, Jessica. And um, <clears throat> Dan, you have a staff report. Thank you, Mr. Chair, this is Carl. Uh, staff um, feels that this is a much more appropriate intervention than the last time. It is minimal. The sight lines of the blue are not seen from far away. So this is appropriate, meets the Secretary of the Interior Standards, and we would recommend the approval of the issuance of a certificate of appropriateness. Thank you. Thank you, Carl. With that, I'll open it up for uh, commission discussion and comments. All right, uh, not seeing any, I'll add my comments now. I, I think that uh, <clears throat> this scope of work for this renovation is uh, a vast improvement over the um, extensive renovations that were previously approved. It, the, uh, in that office area, in terms of the uh, mutton or mullion pattern for the office, I wonder, uh, without creating a perception that's an entrance. I wonder if the new uh, 
mutton pattern could be uh, similar to that of the existing windows with the uh, divided lights on top and then the, the wider muttons in the window field. Does the applicant have any uh, response to that? Well, um, well, thank you for that suggestion, Mr. Chairman. The um, our thought were was that since we're replacing the the entrance on the left with basically new clear anodized aluminum that was kind of clearly new, um, we felt that we wanted to reflect that kind of in the symmetry uh, of that because we weren't making that, and that, that's right now that leftward door is um, just plain clear anodized aluminum with the door off to one side. We wanted to at least make it symmetrical in the middle, but that to keep it clearly new, uh, keep it the aluminum and basically reflect, make it the same as the one on the left, but without the door yeah. rather than make it look like it was something that was original. Understood. So my comments just reflect that uh, I think the rhythm of the windows being mm -hmm. consistent all the way to the right, <clears throat> in my mind, would be preferable. And then it would basically uh, define the entrance even more distinctly as being different from the windows. But that I would not make that a requirement. OK, um, we will study that. I think I see your point in that my thought or response would be we might look at um, wider mullions for both the door and the office um, because they do look the, the contrast in terms of the scale of those elements is maybe more than um, more than would be appropriate. So we will study some we will study wider mullions for for both of those. Thank you. All right. Thank you, uh, Director Hung. Thank you. I just have a question. So I see on the site plan, you also showed the water features in the back, um, the um, play area and the pool. Are those still going to be a part of this plan? Um, they will be maintained in their current condition. Our long term oh. goal is to do a full renovation of that and actually add uh, a bathhouse. Oh, OK. Um, I see. That's one Great. of the one of the items on the table for our. Um, uh, about to begin citywide recreation master plan. This is a Ooh. it's a wonderful facility. So um, we would like to do some renovations there. This project is restricted to the uh, the building, the parking, and the great lawn at this time. Got it. Thank you. Um, my comments are just that I I believe you did a really wonderful job um, keeping with the the architecture and sort of making it more like you said modest and streamlined. Um, I especially enjoy the landscaping and how you've created the column like trees on the Great Lawn and preserving that view. I think it'll be wonderful sort of multi purpose space um, all around this. And so I appreciate the work that you've done um, to, to sort of. To, to slim slim down the bulk a little bit. Thank you. Thank you, director. We have a we have a wonderful team. All right, I don't see any other hands raised. Well, Carl? Thank you, Mr. Chair. I just have a quick question. Where, because I don't see it, maybe I miss it. Where are the location of the bike racks? Uh, that is on the, er, is that the earlier plan that we have. Let me see where that is, I can tell you. <clears throat> I think it's the first site plan we showed. Which would be it shows in the sorry, this is Nancy Nozick. Um, it shows in the yeah. renderings. We updated the site plans after East design review, uh, but you don't. This is the previous um, submission. So oh, it's not so it doesn't. Here. Oh, okay. Wanna... It's on slide number 12 in the revised revision that you sent us. Thanks. Yeah. Nancy. Yeah. So I can tell you where they are. There will be bike racks. You see where it's the word entry. There in the addition. There's some bike racks both to the north and south of that. So the idea is that there's the glass vestibule, but either side of that is like a, a, a terrace. And so each of those terraces will have some bike racks. And then 
right where there's that little implied curve between the pool and the water play down below there in that lawn area to the north of that place right there in the middle that's going to be where bike racks are so if, if people are coming to the pool or water play area they can have bikes there as well thank you all right uh, director i see your hand is still raised you have further comments or i it... yeah i do have another question on that note where will the benches be located are those shown on our landscape plan nancy uh, I don't know if they're on our landscape plan since we have revised things. Um, they're essentially, oh yeah, they're on the rendering there. Mm -hmm. They're kind the, of either that, side of the drop off area. That's the original. Right. Oh, Let's see if we have them on our new. They do show they're in there's, in the same. There's a seating area right there. there. Are they show in the rendering. Oh, yeah. So there's benches on both sides of that for sort of more of an intentional seating area. Um, is where the focus of the, the benches are. Let me check the landscape plan quick. Too. It looks like the, the uh, bike racks are visible at the entrance there too. Mm -hmm. yep. Are there going to be benches yeah. also in the play area, the the swing set area? There are some existing benches there that we're planning to uh, to maintain. Great. Is that yeah, there's, there's very, quite a few. Very important. There's about ten of them. Or actually, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. There are seven existing benches in the playground area. Okay, great. Um, just a suggestion, not a condition. I, you know, I would be open to having the bike racks be that same blue color, just oh. at the entryway, just to make a little pop of color, um, to match the the rec blue um just to add a little playfulness um to that entry area well thank but, you for yeah thank you <laughs> we'll take a look at it thank you director seeing no further hands um i'll accept a motion from the commission Anybody can provide a motion. Alan. Uh, I make the motion to um, approve as presented. I don't believe there were any conditions that we had. Um, no, no, no conditions, just uh, a few considerations. Uh, we have a motion. Do we have a second? I'll, I'll second that motion. All right, we'll give that to uh, Michelle. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion on the motion? If not, uh, Dan, please. Mr. Chair, just clarification. There were, there were some considerations that you wanted to have looked at, like the mullions and the blue color. Um, do you want that into the motion as well? Blue color for the uh, bike racks, just as a recommendation. Alan, are you on board with adding those considerations to your motion? Um, Sure, I have a personal issue with the blue, but that's a, another discussion, uh, but sure. All right, and Michelle. Yeah, I, I, I'll second it. All right. Thank you. So we'll add that to the motion. Uh, no further discussion, Dan, please call the vote and announce the results. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So we have a motion to approve as presented with recommendations that um, to be a study of the wider mullions for the doorways on the front and that the bike racks be uh, made the, the blue Cleveland Rec Center color. Yes. Um, all right, so Ms. Anderson? Yes. Mr. Benezzi? Yes. Mr. Clickia? Yes. Mr. Dreyer? Yes. Mr. Edmund? Oh, he's recused, I'm sorry. He's recused. Um, Director Wong? Yes. Mr. Strickland? Yes. And Mr. Trasic? Yes. And Mr. Chair, the uh, motion passes unanimously. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. Uh, so, for the applicant, uh, this is a very exciting project and looking forward to see it move forward. Thank you very much. Thank you. So are we, and thank you all for your time and your support. We, uh, we really look forward to making this happen. So, that's great. Thank you again. Okay. Uh, we'll move on to the third 
agenda item case number 22032, Ohio City Historic District Bridge Works 2429 West Superior Viaduct, revised plans, new garage, landscaping, and new construction mixed use building. Would the representative please introduce themselves and tell us about your project? Hi, this is Steve Dennings at LBA Architects. Um, so we have, you know, been to landmarks a uh, few times for this project. Um, so this is some revisions and following up on the conditions for landscaping in the parking garage uh, that were previously uh, placed on the approval um, from September of last year. Next slide. Um, so the main change for the um, tower that was approved in September is we have added one story. Um, and that story is going to house uh, office space and that's going to be located on the 11th floor. Um, so directly below what is the restaurant level, um, which is where the building steps back in this rendering. Go to the next slide. We have a comparison of the previous version. Uh, on the left is the approved 15 story building from the September meeting. Um, and on the right is the proposed 16 story uh, building presenting today. And then the next slide shows the uh, opposite view. So the previous one was from the east. This is the west view. So it's very, you know, keeping everything pretty much the same. It's just the, the height of the building. Um, it's increased from 162 feet um, to 170 feet, um, which is still well below the original proposal that was approved in 2021 um, that was 200 feet. So that's the change in height. There's one more slide uh, showing the, you know, everything else with the materials we presented last time are, are the same. Um, so that, so that's the first item. So, you know, we kind of have this broken into three sections. Um, so if we want to address comments as we go, um, on the height, uh, we could do that now. Then we'll do the landscaping and then the garage will be the last item. Then. Now, if you just complete your presentation, we'll okay. Hold comments to the end on all three elements. Okay. All right. This is the site plan. Um, the site, the footprint of all the buildings have stayed the same. Um, so we have the on the left side here. You have a one-story retail building uh, with some utility area behind it. The tower um, in the middle with the hotel lobby, residential lobby, um, and some retail space. On the Detroit side, there's that little T-shaped building that's the um, hit existing ticket booth, and that will remain as previously um, shown on our plan. And then on the far right is the parking garage. And just a reminder also that space kind of between the tower and the parking garage at, at the utility easement, um, as well as provides access to what could be the underbridge area in the, in the future. Um, and I'll, I'll let Emily Loomis with our firm, uh, she's a landscape designer, go through the plans for the uh, project. Sure. So the species selected um, for this project provide a variety of um, diverse and climate appropriate um, trees, shrubs, and perennials. Um, the physical characteristics will provide interest year round. And you can go to the next slide. Um, just some more examples of the plants on the site. Next slide. Next slide. Again, showing some of the ivies that we'll talk about later. Um, we go to the next slide. Some of the site furniture. Um, the landscape plan really aims to help grow the urban tree canopy as we'll be adding um, 46 trees and saving six of the current site. Um, and that provides not only to the community, but value to the environment as well. You can go to the next slide. Uh, again, keeping in line with uh, more of the modern look we're going for. Um, Slide. Um, these are the Cleveland approved um, street lamps and then um, some of the more pedestrian lighting that we'll have on the site. 
from the next slide. Some of the design inspiration. Next slide. So this is a hardscape plan um, that shows the different colors that we're going to propose as the um, hardscape uh, with a more organic form. Next slide. This is the softscape plan showing um, a large swatch of, of green space here. Go to the next slide. And this is just the planting plan overlaid. The next slide. Um, Jesse Slugger with LBA. So just going through the rendering, there's quite a few, so we can go through them quick. But this is kind of a bird's eye view of the west end of the plaza uh, with the one store retail building in the front. Next, please. Um, this is a view from 25th and uh, Detroit, looking towards the tower and the one story building. Next slide, please. This is looking south. Uh, on the northwest corner of the site. Next slide, please. Another view between the ticket booth looking west, ticket booth and the tower looking west. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, this is along the, the bridge uh, looking west between the one story portion of the tower and the bridge. Next slide, please. The view between the ticket booth and the one story uh, portion of the tower looking south. You can see the bridge wall in the background. Next slide, please. Uh, this is the view looking west of the ticket booth of the tower uh, background. Next slide, please. Um, this is the space between the tower and the garage looking north uh, where the space could be used as kind of event space, food truck parking. It also works as a Service access to the back of the building as well. Next slide, please. Uh, view looking west. This is uh, more towards the east side of the site. Um, again, with that space between the garage and the tower, looking at the tower. Next slide, please. Uh, there's another uh, view looking south between the garage and the tower. Uh, next slide, please. This is the hotel drop off looking west. Next slide, please. And then, if you looking eastward, um, tower of the garage in the background. Next slide, please. And there's another view looking west uh, past the hotel drop off, the one story building where the retail or the utility pen is located. Next slide, please. These are some of the 2D elevations of the garage. So I guess going into the garage, um, I think the main goal today is to try to get the the main footprint of the building approved. Uh, I was, so I'd say, is, you know, ideally we're, we're looking for approval of the massing and structure of the building. Um, so this is the 2D elevations of the four sides of the garage, um, the number of levels. Uh, the garage will feature is kind of mixed use that has bike storage as well as four retail spaces on the first floor. Um, with the south and the majority of the west half of the garage uh, with softscaping wrapped around it. Um, and then just where the storefronts are, we have some hardscape so, uh, for pedestrian access into the storefronts and looking through the windows. Next slide, please. Um, so this is the view. Uh, what we presented with Ohio City is looking and exploring the idea of the vine and ivy growing up the side of the buildings. We provide you know large planted beds at the base to give it opportunity to grow. Um, but the idea yeah, is yeah. long term. Yeah. Next slide, please. Uh, another view of the garage uh, from the Pure Vida Street. Next slide, please. Uh, this is a view from the bridge of uh, the garage. Next slide, please. And this is looking westward from the bridge. Next slide, please. 
And then this is uh, just kind of the, some of the configuration background to understand the massing and the size of the garage uh, without any buying growing up on the building. Next slide. And you kind of flip through, and this is just a progression slide of uh, the ID and buying growing up the building. And uh, if you remember the slide we had uh, previously, we showed two different buying types that would be appropriate for this location. Um, one was the Boston ID, which is evergreen throughout the year and is a uh, relatively hardy uh, vine that could survive in Cleveland. The other one is a Virginia creeper, again, climate appropriate, um, although that one has a little bit more color variation to it, but then loses its leaves in the winter. And I believe that is the, a few more pictures of the garage without any, just to understand the massing and scale of the garage. All right, thank you. That concludes your presentation. Yep. All right. And uh, so can we have the design review report? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, this project was reviewed by the Ohio City um, Design Review Committee on the 20th. They had concerns about the green screening and covering versus a cladding system on the garage, um, concerns about how it would look in the winter, and um, did motion to approve the uh, height, the landscaping, and the foundation or footprint with the garage with the condition that the garage return with the final facade details. Okay, thank you very much. <clears throat> For this particular project, I know that there's considerable interest and uh, this project certainly will be impactful on that corner. So with that, we're going to uh, provide an opportunity for public comment. And we ask that the, uh, the representatives that wanna speak on this project um, adhere to the rules and procedures that were outlined at the uh, beginning of the meeting. Um, yeah, Mr. Chair, um, as far as public comment goes, we did receive an email from Councilman Kerry McCormick stating, as he put it, that he and the vast majority of the community support the project and adding a vibrant use to one of the most active corners of the city. Additionally, we have former Congresswoman Mary Rose Okar, who was requested to speak on this item. So if the chair would like to recognize her, she can enter her comments into the record. Before I recognize Ms. Okar, I see that uh, Ray Tarasek has his hand up. Yes, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, and, I, and I apologize earlier, before we get into any public comment, I do want to state for the record that I'll be recusing myself from this matter. Okay, thank you, Ray. <clears throat> With that, we'll recognize uh, Ms. Okar for her comments on the project. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, I hear you very well. Thank you so much. And members of the committee and the staff, excellent staff, um, let me give you four reasons why this entire project, let alone today, should be rejected. And I don't agree, and I often do agree with our Congress council person, um, but I don't think the majority of people are for this project. Uh, St. Malachy's has never been even consulted, which is right next door. Uh, this is, a, a, his, so the first reason is this is a historic area. Ohio City was surrounded originally by Cleveland. It's on the National Register for Historic Preservation. We could lose our status, which involves uh, historic tax credits and grants. There's no attempt to blend in like uh, other developers, his next door neighbor, uh, that blends into the Ohio City area. The second reason is the traffic in this area is hazardous and horrendous. St. Malachy's pastor I just uh, recently talked to, uh, which is dwarfed by this building, has a children's program after school. 150 people have a free luncheon every day. Uh, adults come there from Lakeview, which is one of the oldest public housing uh, units in the country. Uh, and others go to St. Malachy's. There's two exits uh, for the shoreway, one from the west, one from the east. It is horrendous. The community has 
beg the city to do something about this and we don't see anything happening. And father just told me recently, this is a uh, accident that's gonna happen. Thirdly, there's flooding by these high story buildings. It's not enough to look at the building and the landscape, and now they wanna even add stories, remarkable. Um, but ask Rex Auto, uh, his whole, ba his whole uh, auto place uh, where he uh, repairs cars was totally flooded. Ask some of the neighbors. They call me about their flooding. They didn't have this until uh, this developer did another multi-story building. Uh, so flooding and utilities, we have uh, blackouts at least three times a month because uh, somehow um, the municipal light plant can't accommodate us. Uh, and number four, um, this project again, it's tax abatement and um, our property taxes have gone up. Take the woman who, who for 48 years has um, uh, paid $600 a half a year. They raised it to 1500. Her social security check uh, doesn't even cover that even though the home is uh, paid for. So there's no attempt uh, to help St. Malachy's. There's no attempt to help uh, Lakeview, and it, it is not in keeping with the neighborhood whatsoever. And I totally disagree that the majority of our people are for this project. I'm only sorry I didn't bring uh, tens of them down here because I could have. Thank you so much. Thank you for those comments, Ms. Oker. And uh, is there anyone else either for or against this project that would like to speak. Uh, good morning, uh, Chairman, members of the board, Nate Law, Ohio City, Inc. Um, am I able to speak? Yes, go ahead. Thank you. Um, so Ohio City, Inc. is not for or against this project. Just wanted to quickly talk about um, some of the community process that this has gone through over uh, various iterations. Uh, throughout the last few years, um, and I, I will start by saying this is a little bit before I started at Ohio City Inc. So I'm not I'm not completely um, uh, I don't know everything that went on before I was here. But uh, from my understanding was that this project was posted to our community engagement site, Corbinize, in uh, January of 2021. Um, again, the project's gone through various iterations, uh, and you know even though the kind of um, the massing is similar and uh, the, you know, the, the type of uses has been similar, uh, you know, there's been design variations. Um, I believe that the development team had met with block clubs when they started uh, proposing this project again in around 2021. Um, I'm not exactly sure what meetings took place or where they took place. Um, but, you know, the comments that I could gather through Corbinize, um, have been generally positive or neutral about the project. Um, a lot of comments were uh, interested in knowing more about the levels of affordable housing. Um, obviously, this is you know a design review for uh, the parking garage, and I believe my understanding is that the building itself has already been granted final approval. Um, but I just wanted to comment on that as well. Um, it, just some of the feedback we've generally heard about uh, you know large scale projects like this is uh, that that neighbors prefer the density on commercial corridors as opposed to within the residential, you know, one family, two family neighborhoods. Um, that's just something we've consistently heard, not specific to this project, but uh, just through past planning exercises that we've done. Um, I definitely respect the comments from uh, Ms. Okar about, um, you know, community feedback and uh, flooding and, and property tax, uh, you know, increases. Um, but yeah, I just want to provide that that input that um, you know this has been through a community process uh, that started even before I began. So, thank you. All right, thank you for those comments. <clears throat> and I see, uh, I think the applicant, uh, Ms. Mr. Uh, Basing. Thanks so much, Chair Strickland. Yeah, I just wanted to you know 
factually uh, you know, let the Landmarks Commission know that we have a formal letter of support from Ohio City Incorporate Executive Director. So uh, I think you know, Mr. Hull, you know, based on his relative um, newness to the organization, doesn't have you know, the background as he had uh, prefaced in many of his comments. Uh, we've got a letter of support uh, from uh, the Cuyahoga Metropolitan Housing Authority, so Lakeview Estates, uh, which is a very important neighbor of ours to the north, uh, you know, has been uh, very much considered uh, in part of this. And then you have Father Gurnick at St. Malachy is somebody you know who I've met with and the development team has met with you know, both the lay um, and the formal. So I just want to make sure that I'm addressing you know the facts uh, and, and not just speculation uh, or um, comments that you know, don't necessarily have the uh, experience uh, or the um, details. Uh, so you know, we're very excited about this project you know, as uh, LDA presented. You know, this is a modification and an addressing of various conditions you know, that the Landmarks Commission you know, had shared in our previous presentation. So we feel like uh, we're providing the details and you know, are looking uh, to you know, answer any details on the presentation, but we appreciate all of your service. Uh, and your attention to this important project. All right, thank you for those comments. And uh, now I'll look for the uh, staff report. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, given that the tower building was previously approved by the commission, staff does not have an issue with the addition of eight feet or one floor to the building to make it 16 stories. We also feel that the landscaping is appropriate for the site. Um, staff also agrees with the Ohio City Design Review Committee on the topic of the green wall for the parking garage. Uh, we don't feel that the green wall treatment is appropriate and have concerns about the long term damage Ivy could cause to the structure. Um, staff has no issue with the form structure placement or massing of the proposed garage, but feel that it should have more creative visual interest and relate to the project's new proposed building and or the existing architectural context of the immediate area. All right, thank you, Dan, for that report. <clears throat> With that, I'll open it up for comments from the commission. Mr. Edmund. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair, just a quick clarification. So today, am I correct? Today we are only reviewing the additional story and the garage, is that correct? And the landscape. And the landscape, right, thank you. Um, so I uh, actually, Mr. Musson said a lot of what I, was sort of thinking about the garage. Um, the uh, I, I, I do share the concerns about uh, the the IV on it from a practical standpoint as much as anything. Um, and I, I would say that you know the um, the, the main building has a an, an architectural character uh, that uh, that. I, not to just be sort of opinionated about it, but that, but that I really like and I think is is refreshing and um, and uh, really uh, works. And I think we'll have some nice views from distances. And I think if the garage could complement that a little more, uh, it would be uh, it would really help. Um, I did want to ask about the garage lighting, both in terms of lighting the garage itself, if that's contemplated, and also the lighting within the garage and any control of lighting spillover. So if the applicant could. Um, talk about that a little bit. Thank you. And, and general, you know, the interior lighting of the garage will be kept back from the, the edges of the building. So, you know, you would minimize the, you know, view from the exterior to the interior lighting. Um, typically on garages too, there's, you know, been a, you know, just new lighting is typically dimmed until, you know, there's motion. Um, so, at, you know, most times it will be at dim and when there's motion, it'll brighten up. Um, on the exterior of the lighting, um, we have not had, we don't have specific um, lighting for the facade of the garage, especially since we were proposing the um, kind of green, you know, green facade. Let me, let me add to the lighting, too. The lighting will shine down so that the light will hit the floor of the garage and will not spill off the edge of the floor and go outside of the garage. So it, it all will be downward directed okay thank you all right thank you uh director hung thank you all um i want to make some overall comments about 
you know, the area and then move into design review. But I think that, you know, ultimately this is a critical corner. It is on the 25 connects um, West 25th street corridor, which is a major transportation corridor that will um, have um, transit oriented um, improvements and multimodal improvements. And certainly this proposal falls in the category of transit oriented development. Um, we also have Irishtown Bend, which is uh, heavily um, invested in by multiple parties, but the city of Cleveland is very much um, in support of Irishtown Bend and the activation of this corner um, will add a lot to the vitality there. Um, and then ultimately, you know, this, this is a key connection point between the neighborhoods of downtown and Ohio City. So, um, you know, the, 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 the proposal is, um, it, it makes sense to me from a planning perspective. Um, related to design review, I mean, I think that adding one story, um, you know, it's, it's not a significant addition in terms of the height. So I uh, am in support of the addition of that floor. Um, I am in the middle related to the greening of the garage. I think it can look uh, maybe a little too um, natural, perhaps. I'm not sure if that's the right word as compared to this very like modern and sleek look of the building. Um, it's kind of got that uh, modernist look to it. And so having some treatment that would match um, the architecture, um, you know, I, you know, would be interested in, but, um, you know, I, I could go either way on that. I think that um, the landscaping itself, the work that you've done on that corner um, is tremendous. I, I really appreciate the um, playfulness and the um, uh, the elevation changes and the, the little um, humps and flowers and uh, seating elements. So I, I just think that overall, you've done a wonderful job with the treatment of this corner, um, activating it for people and pedestrians and um, and bicyclists, um, and overall, I think that um, it's it's an excellent project. Thanks. Thank you, Director. Uh, Mr. Dreyer. Thank you. Um, I I wish the uh, presentation really had more context to it, um, specifically the church next door, but also just a, a bigger context on how this sits in the, in the, uh, in, in that, in, in that neighborhood. Um, it's, it's sort of hard to see from the drawings that we do have. Um, the, uh, office hotel building, I have supported that in the past. Uh, I will say barely supported it, uh, because I do think it's just too big and. So I'm having a hard time, even though it's only one floor, really coming to terms with that. Um, I think the garage, um, you know, I think it's a pretty picture when the green is all over the garage, but we know this is Cleveland and we know that's probably not gonna happen. The biggest problem I have with the garage is the lights are gonna be on 24 seven. And um, that's gonna have an impact no matter how they're aimed or, or, or how they're dimmed or, or what they're still going to be on and you're still going to see them. And, uh, that has a definite impact on the sort of the quality of life in that neighborhood. Um, so, um, that that's, that's all that I've got. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Dreyer, Ms. Anderson. Uh, th thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Um, I did not support this uh, project in the past. I think uh, the size and the scale is um, just too overwhelming for the historic district. Uh, originally, there was the Campbell block on this site that was a seven unit, so, I mean, seven story building. I think the uh, historic, uh, original historic fabric should inform uh, how we proceed on these uh, uh, new developments. Uh, so, you know, again, adding another story is going in the opposite direction for me. Um, my, cons my other concern is, uh, I, I, we got inconsistent testimony on this, but um, 
St. Malachy's has been uh, an anchor in that neighborhood, a very important part of that neighborhood. And not only should they be informed, but they should be uh, incorporated throughout the discussion of these developments, uh, which definitely um, impacts them greatly. And uh, you know, I I know I know that in the in other situations, the uh, neighbors are not engaged or informed or involved in uh, these projects or you know, uh, various redevelopment throughout the city. And that that is crucial. That is something that we cannot we cannot dismiss the, the neighbors uh, on these uh, properties, especially, you know, especially a, a long term um, integral part of this, uh, the community like St. Malachy's, but any neighbor. Uh, so uh, that that really concerned me when I heard that. Um, you know, granted, maybe they were notified of the guy, what, but uh, this is a pattern that has gone on repeatedly. I, I'm aware of that, that uh, development happens and, um, depending on the situation, there there is not much um, engagement with the neighbors. So I, I am concerned about that as well. So uh, thank you, those are my remarks. Thank you, Ms. Anderson. <clears throat> so uh, I'm going to ask Mr. Roberts to listen to my comments here and make any corrections if I make a misstatement. This project was approved in September of last year for consideration of the tower, primarily with the, uh, the garage and the landscape to come back. It was approved as a 15-story tower. The vote was three to two with one abstention uh, with four commission members not present. So I just want to remind the commission that this project was approved uh, at a 15 story height. So what's presented on the agenda is one agenda item. So we'll be voting on the garage, the landscaping, and a new 16 story structure. Uh, so, depending on whether this vote passes or fails, I believe that the existing vote would still stand for the 15 story structure. Mr. Roberts, am I correct in that? Chair Strickland, you are correct, and I appreciate that you have <coughs> explained and pointed that out. Okay. And the applicant is asking for approval of the uh, basically the massing and the footprint for the garage and significant comments have been expressed with regarding the uh, the cladding i'll call it the exterior fenestration on the garage so when i ask for a motion i would like the motion to include language excluding cladding in the approval uh, for the garage and that the uh, any cladding design come back to the commission for approval rather than staff review. All right, are there any other commission comments on this project? With seeing none, I'll ask for a uh, motion from the commission. There Mr. are some other hands. Mr. So you have Mr. Benezzi and Director Wong. I guess I'm, oh yeah, I'm sorry. I was scaled down too far on the participants panel. Uh, Mr. Bernese. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I just wanted to, since I know I was not at the last meeting, I, I particularly I was it. disappointed. I had to be away yeah. on family matters when this came for its last approval. And I just want to express sentiment in, a, in a agreement with Director Huang that the importance of this corner cannot be understated for the city of Cleveland. I particularly, I work at this corner every day. I've worked here for three years. I scooter every day. Well, given, unless it's snowing. I, I, I'm around here and this is a corner of Cleveland that has extreme opportunity. It has a chance to be an extremely impressive corridor in 
relationship to other municipalities around the country and what it could offer. Um, and I think this development is going to kickstart a new understanding of what it means to be close to the river, to utilize your natural resources, to be close to an urban core, to live where you work. Um, and that's really all I have to say. I didn't get to say that at the last meeting, and I particularly wanted the applicant to know my sentiment towards this project. Um, so that's that is what I what I have for for this corner. Um, and that's Thank it. you, Mr. Benazi. Uh, Director Hong. Yes, uh, thank you, um, Mr. Chair. I full stop. Cities evolve, and the city of Cleveland, as we know it today, has evolved over time to include developments um, that have significantly risen, whether it's through downtown Cleveland or other areas. And with this being on the west side, I'm sorry, the east side of West 25th Street, um, closer to the west side of the flats. Um, where there have been other pieces of new construction um, and this being outside of interior corridors where there are a significant amount of historic homes, I really believe that this is a, a significant, important, and appropriate um, development on this corner. Um, and I appreciate Mr. Benazi's comments about our relationship to the river um, and the, the relationship again, between downtown and Ohio City across the Detroit Superior Bridge. I just think this is going to be significant. Um, I also just wanted to add a comment that I love the mint green accent. I think it's a wonderful, almost a throwback to what we've seen in other historic buildings with sort of the green, uh, maybe a darker green, but the green um, in our industrial heritage, um, if that makes sense. With that, I wanna make a mission to approve the, uh, the project. Uh, with the addition of the story to 16 stories um, to approve the landscaping um, and to approve the massing of the parking structure with the condition that the cladding return um, for commission approval. I also want to make a recommendation that the applicant continue discussions with St. Malachi's. I, I appreciate the comment. I think it's important to continue being connected as neighbors and to coordinate. And then I also want to add the recommendation that um, the project team speak with our urban forester, if you haven't already, on coordinating on native species, um, particularly in the public right of way. Thank you. Thank you, Director, for that motion. Do we have a second for that motion? Mr. Edmund? I'll second that. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion on the motion? Seeing none, uh, Dan, please call a vote and announce the results. And with one uh, recusal. Right. Um, Ms. Anderson? No. Mr. Benezzi? Yes. Mr. Kalikia? Yes. Mr. Dreyer? No. Mr. Edmund? Yes. Uh, Councilman Gray still not here. Director Wong? Yes. And Mr. Strickland? Yes. Uh, Mr. Chair, the motion passes five to two. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, so we wish the yeah, applicant yeah. That continued success. Thank you, everyone. Thanks very much. I just wanted to say, Father Gurnick has never been consulted. I just talked to him. But you're you're factually inaccurate. I can produce no, emails and calendars and whatnot. So no, he has never been considered. Thank you. This, this, order. this is, uh, is not appropriate. Move on. This, this right. is out of order. It's okay. Case is I'm done. I'm out of order. I know that. Shut. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. With that, we'll move on to the fourth case, 23041 Taco Oco, uh, various sites downtown, installation of temporary public art would the representative please introduce themselves and tell us about your project yes hi there erin guido with land studio also uh nancy boylan and l wilson are on the call with land studio in case there's additional questions we're really excited to present this project toko oko 
um, is a uh, Brazilian duo that we had worked with um, pre pandemic and are now finally bringing the project um, to be installed temporarily in downtown Cleveland. You can go to the next slide. The artist team is uh, Lara and Guy, and um, they came for a visit in Cleveland and actually because of the pandemic produced these artworks in Brazil. The original plan was to for them to come to Cleveland to produce them um, and uh, ship them here to Cleveland. And um, so uh, we are in the process of building the bases for the artworks to um, uh, install them downtown. We'll go to the next slide. Um, this is uh, some of their precedent artworks. Um, they're more known for mini mini sculptures and uh, in all kinds of materials, including resin and uh, clay and, and wood and things like that. And um, if you want to go to the next slide, in working with them, um, we have produced 16 artworks that are between four and six feet, six and a little bit um, feet tall. Um, there are uh, different varieties of the sculptures. There's two um, shelter pieces, two sets of three uh, Guido sculptures, which is um, uh, completely unrelated to my last name. It is, um, they were named Guido um, in honor of one of their friends who had a father uh, that was a scientist that they really admired. Um, there's two sets of uh, two different kinds of birds and then um, two pieces named Murmur, which are the guardians of forgotten memories. Go to the next slide. Oh, and um, I just want to note that these pieces are made out of fiberglass and then uh, with some um, uh, some metal piping um, in, in the interior. Um, and then they're painted with basically like an automotive um, uh, paint. And then um, the intent is to install them on a weighted base, which I'll get into more, more in detail later. But you can see um, images here of the different types of sculptures. You can go to the next slide. And the next slide. And this is just a little bit, bit in, process, in process of the artworks being built. You can go to the next slide. And then the next one. And then the next one, the location. So um, the intent for these is to install the artworks kind of uh, throughout Cleveland as kind of a a fun um, a, a fun thing that pops up. They're pretty small in scale, and so you know you can maybe see someone going downtown trying to find all sixteen sculptures. They're going to be in the. We're proposing to install them um, in Public Square at the. Um, at the entrance of City Hall and in um, at the entrance of the main branch of the downtown library and then at the um, within the um, mall C garden beds just want to note, which we know we also presented this to land uh, planning commission and just want to note that um, because we're we're uh, for the artworks that are at City Hall and um, in mall C we're we're applying to get a license agreement to, for the temporary installation of those and we're working through them. So um, because the weight is so much, just making sure that they can be on top of the, the staircase at City Hall. So there could be um, some changes on the exact location of that one um, and the one at Mall C in the garden beds. And, and we can talk about that at the end too, if you'd like, and, and Tara Petrus is also here, who's been helping us with that. Um, you can see the locations here, uh, Public Square, Cleveland Public Library, City Hall, and the Overlook Garden at Mall C. You can go to the next slide. And um, this is just a detail of where they're getting installed on Public Square. You can go to the next slide. So we have a set of three guidos in one garden bed. The um, three orange dancing birds are kind of scattered throughout the garden beds. And then there's three guidos scattered in a in a little clustered area. Um, and these are, so we're working with um, Public Square to locate these and making sure that they're not in the way of any irrigation or anything. And for all the, the pieces that are installed in the garden beds, the base will be buried a few inches and then topped with dirt. So it'll kind of look like they're standing in the garden beds. And then we will replace the, um, the plantings when we remove the artworks. Can go to the next slide. 
just a little details of these locations if you want to flip through um, the three sets of guidos. Go to the next slide. One of the birds, other birds. Those are the orange and turquoise birds. And then the three uh, guidos in a, the other area. Um, and then the two pieces called shelter are going to be at the entrance of the Cleveland Public Library. And the, we've been working with the Cleveland Public Library and they're really excited about these. Go to the next slide. Can see where they're going to be installed. And so these ones actually have a base, which we'll go into the detail, but it's, it's basically a weighted metal base with, um, and then uh, with six inches of a square of concrete that's going to be painted. Um, kind of like the color of the concrete. Go to the next slide. And then the three birds on the Overlook Garden on Mall C, our, our preference would be that they would be installed within the garden bed, like we're showing right here, but um, there could be um, the need for them to just be installed on the, the kind of sidewalk overlook area, which would also be uh, fine with us. And we're just working with the the city on the license agreement and the irrigation, making sure we're, everything works since this is a rooftop. Go to the next slide, there's the garden bed that we would would be our preference. Go to the next slide. And then the two artworks that we're proposing for um, the entrance to City Hall. Go to the next slide. These are the artworks. Next slide. And you can see kind of the, the white um, rectangles on either side. That's the location that we're proposing them for. And if um, if they are, they're, they're about 15, 1,500 pounds um, uh, with, the, with all in the base, the concrete, the metal. And so we're just working with the city to make sure that that won't disrupt anything on those stairs. Um, if, if they were to, we would put them on the, the sidewalk below the stairs. You can go on the next slide. And then a little bit of details about the base. Um, it's a 40 by 40 mounting plate. Um, there, there's kind of like dowels going up into eat all the artwork. So even though the actual artworks are pretty lightweight, these will be um, really weighted down with each of these bases. You can go to the next slide. And you can see how there's going to be a um, uh, six inches of concrete attached to the base. And um, when it's gonna, when it's not buried within a garden bed, this will be painted like a concrete color. We picked out like a, a gray color that matched the concrete as best as we could. Go to the next slide. Um, sorry, these are not too visible, but uh, this is just a couple of details from the um, fabricator, and you can just flip through all the way to the end if you'd like. These are just the the details about the um, the base. If you have any questions about. It. And we got um, we worked with Osborne Engineering um, to make sure everything would be weighted and um, appropriate for these locations. And that's um, our presentation. Looking forward to answering any questions. Thank you so much. Thank you for that presentation. And I'll ask for a uh, design review report. Thank you, Mr. Chair. This project was um, reviewed by the local downtown flats design review committee on March 24th and April 6th. It went to city planning on April 21st and was also reviewed by uh, the pet bot review on March 28th. Um, there was some concern on the bases, uh, which was noted and um, impact to the fronts of historic buildings. All right, thank you. And uh, we have a staff report. Hi, um, this is Tara, the public art coordinator. Um, thank you. Uh, there, um, as Jessica stated, it did go through several reviews um, and was approved by those committees. Um, one thing that was mentioned um, in planning commission was just um, cultural sensitivity about the names of one of the groups of, um, of statues. Um, and then as far as the locations for City Hall and um, Mall C, we did receive notification. It had gone to PetBot on March 28th, but we received notification on April 17th that the, the top of the front steps of City Hall, because of the granite surface, they said it would not support 
um, those two sculptures at those weights. So their recommendation was to move them down to the sidewalk. Um, I would probably recommend um, in front of the posts that contain the, the flagpoles, that part of the sidewalk. So they're still sort of up against the structure and not randomly placed. And then the same um, concern was brought about with the uh, Mall C location, not just with the irrigation of the plant beds, but also the weight being the um, the roof of the convention center. So again, the recommendation by um, our real estate group was to place those on the sidewalks, but land is working with them. Um, I am in support of this project overall. It did um, overlap purviews of both Landmarks Commission and City Planning Commission. I think these are fun and whimsical. Um, we've done similar uh, projects in front of historical structures in the past with the cracking art that was maybe about, um, I want to say maybe about nine years ago, um, there were cracking art, uh, similar sculptures uh, around downtown at historic buildings. And it just adds a little bit of fun and whimsy. And it is only a temporary location. I just want to make sure that land understands that it has to be just under a year because at the year mark, it will require legislation. Um, but I'll continue to work with them in our real estate group on uh, securing those uh, locations that are still in the general area of City Hall in Mossy, but maybe not exactly as shown on the presentation today. All right, thank you for that report. And um, so with that, I'll open it up for commission comments. If, if I can real quick, Mr. Chair, um, Landmark staff also had a, a report and a couple of comments. Um, if I may, just for clarification, um, the only installations under the commission's purview today are the ones proposed for the library, city hall, and mall C. Those are the only landmark sites in their proposal. So the you know the public square um, installations aren't aren't under our review today. Um, landmark staff's main concern is how these might you know potentially have been attached to the historic buildings, specifically city hall, including public art. Sounds like there are bases, which you know alleviate some of that concern. But we feel that the sidewalk in front of the Stokes Wing might be a better placement for the library pieces. Um, it would have less impact on the library building. Uh, you know, if Wade's being an issue at City Hall, could very well be an issue for the front steps at the library. Um, we also agree with the idea of moving the City Hall statues down to the sidewalk. Um, you know, we had. Some questions looking at the presentation, a lot of those have been addressed today, so staff is generally supportive of the proposal. I did forget to mention that I did receive an email of support from Councilman McCormick. All right, thank you very much. <clears throat> okay, so with that, then I'll open it up for uh, commission comments. I'll start it off. I wanted to uh, get clarification on the uh, the site at Cleveland Public Library. Has the library confirmed that those steps will support that base, or is it anticipated that those will be moved off the steps into the sidewalk area? So they're in support of this installation they actually really would like that it um i think they're at their their aim is to bring a little pop of color and whimsy to that entrance to draw people to it so i think their preference would be that they're installed there and they because we had worked with them before we had the cracking art animals um up elevated uh the, a couple years ago that were temporary installations of these big bluebirds and those um uh, were weighted with water, but were knocked over. So their preference was to to make sure their their only hesitation was to make sure that these were weighted enough. So we've been working with them really closely on like what the base looks like and how much it weighs and everything. And they're in support of that. I can definitely double check um, with them about the weight, but they they're very uh, they know all the information and their their preference is actually to be where the the rectangles are so that. Um, kind of brings a pop of color to that entrance. Understood. So, yeah, we would look for uh, specific confirmation that they've studied that location, whatever resources they need to employ to confirm 
that that location will support that weight. Sure. And then just provide that information to staff. Okay, sure. All right, For uh, I'll open it up for the commission, uh, Ms. Anderson. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I just wanted to, first of all, a clarification on what we are, what, what our purview is here, what we are allowed to vote on and what we are uh, not allowed to vote on, uh, you know, as far as content or specifics, uh, we're, I think we are, uh, it's out of our, our, uh, our what we're considering. Um, so if I just want that clarification first. All right. Uh, Dan, maybe you can provide again, the clarification on the locations that are under our preview and maybe Mr. Roberts with regard to, uh, content. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mr. Chair, um, yeah, to your point, Ms. Anderson, um, today. The only installations that are under the purview of the landmarks commission are the ones being proposed for the library. City Hall and Mall C, because those are all landmark sites. Um, Public Square, you know, that quadrant is not a landmark, so that is not under our purview today. So, um, unless Mr. Roberts um, wants to provide some additional detail on what is under our purview, um, you know, we're primarily looking at placement, but. Um, Secretary Munson, you've, you've I don't have anything further to provide than what you stated. So, uh, Ms. Anderson, I think I get the the nature of your question. I think you were asking if we could provide comment on on the proposed artwork, and um, I think that's outside of our preview. Okay, that's that's uh, good to know, um, and. Um, As far as the library, I, I, I kind of think it, it might be, these might work better at the Stokes wing than uh, in front of the, uh, the Walker Weeks building. Um, and, you know, I, I am a little bit concerned about the, uh, uh, the landing area at the top of the steps and any kind of uh, potential issues or damage that could come up here. But I just, uh, you know, aesthetically, I think they might work better in front of the Stokes building. And I, I actually think there's more traffic there. So I think people will, will see them more. Um, so those are basically my comments. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Director Hung. Yes, thank you. Um, seeing as these are temporary for one year only, I'm satisfied with the locations presented. And I do agree that they'll provide just playfulness and pops of color and interest. Um, I, I do believe that the library and their facilities management is okay with that particular placement. I'm satisfied with the placement in front of the Walker Weeks building, um, seeing that it's only for one year. Um, with that, I will end my comments. I was going to make a motion, but I also see that there are other comments waiting. So I'll, I'll yield until the comments are finished. Thank you, Director. Um, Mr. Kalikia. I'm, I'm just curious, um, they don't seem to have um, a relationship with the actual buildings that they're in front of. Uh, if there's a message that I'm missing, I also see some type of attempt to imitate, you know, Native American mythology, but I'm also missing that message. I'm not really sure what the purpose and function of these sculptures are. Um. So the the artists are Brazilian, and they use. You know, so these are their their creations, and um, these are ex um, extensions of series of works that they've made as mini sculptures. Um, so, um, for for example, the the one at City Hall is called the Keeper of Forgotten Memories. So um, they're kind of like dreamlike uh, mythical figures that the artists have created, and. Um, I mean, the, the intent is really um, to bring fun and whimsy downtown and to showcase um, these artists' works at a larger human scale. Um, we, we think that they'll be really fun to come across, especially for kids. Um, and um, we, 
we are supportive of you know the the artists the designs that this is, this is coming from this duo of brazilian artists all right thank you for that explanation uh john carlo any further comment no i'm fine all right thanks mr edmund uh, thank you mr chair um i would uh, echo uh, director wong's uh, comment about the, the locations i i think um as as long as the uh, technical considerations of the uh, the load are um, adequately addressed, I, I'm, I'm supportive of the locations, um, and and I think that the temporary installations like this that do add a little color and a little whimsy to downtown are, are really great and kind of bring a lot of interest. Uh, my question is: Is there any opportunity for didactics or maybe even online information? You know, if I didn't have the benefit of hearing some of these conversations, I just as a resident saw these, I would. I might like them or whatever, but I would be really curious about like what's going on. And you know, the, these obviously look like there's a lot of metaphor behind them, but maybe I wouldn't get that. So is, is there some way that uh, people can get more information about these, find out about the artists, find out about, you know, some of the meaning behind them? Thank you. Yes, absolutely. Um, so our our intent would be that they're, um, so on, on public square, because they're be buried in the garden beds, we are gonna have um, some signage for them, um, similar to the signage that we install for the um, art wall. It's uh, like a temporary um, didactic signage to give information. Um, we also are intending on doing like a QR code to our website with more information about each piece. And then for the artworks that are that you can actually see the base, we we were gonna do the didactic. Um, smaller on the base with that QR code to get more information is our is our plan right now. Thank you. Yeah, that would be great. That's a great suggestion. <clears throat> All right. Let me make sure I scroll down here and get everyone included. All right, I see no further hands raised except for the director. Director, do you have a motion for us? Yes, I do have a motion. I uh, make a motion to approve the locations of the artwork as presented with the recommendation, so not a condition, that um, Land Studio work with the library to produce the letter of support for that location, as well as the didactics portion. <laughs> um, and so uh, I uh, would just like to add that I think we Definitely need more fun and whimsy in downtown and appreciate this yeah. effort. Thank you. All right. We have a motion with some recommendations. We have a second. Uh, this is Alan. I'll second. Okay. Thank you, Alan. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion on the motion? Seeing none, Dan, please call the roll and uh, announce the results. All right. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Ms. Anderson? Yes. Mr. Benezzi? Yes. Mr. Kulikia? No. Mr. Dreyer? Yes. Mr. Edmund? Yes. Director Wong? Yes. Mr. Strickland? Yes. And Mr. Trasic? Yes. Um, all right. Councilwoman, uh, great is here. I'm just oh. on the phone. I'm sorry. Okay. I can't Council get in Mayor. my I can't get in the uh I can't get on the Zoom meeting, so I've been on the phone and I've been having a lot of problems with this. Oh. That's all. I apologize. Gotcha. Well how how would you how would you like to vote on this matter? Yes. Yes, all right. Um Mr. Chair, the motion passes to, um seven to one. Thank you, Dan. Looking forward to seeing this installation. I, I agree it will be a great addition and a whimsical addition to downtown. Thank you so much, everyone. All right, uh, so that concludes our certificates of appropriateness. We'll move on to concept plans. The first is case number 23038, Magnolia Wade Park Historic District, Magnolia House, 10831 Magnolia Drive, renovations and additions. Would the representative please introduce themselves and tell us about your project? This is Steve Jennings with LDA Architects. Here with Dominic Branty and Kristen Martinez. So this is a um, office 
uh, used on Magnolia Drive and University Circle. Uh, this is, you know, currently occupied by University Circle Incorporated. I um, mean, this is a historic mansion um, that's been, you know, repurposed as offices for the last 50 years. And you can see the, this is the front facade and it's very similar in its current state as the historic photo on the bottom right of the sheet. Next page. And this is just a key plan um, showing the site is on the north side of Magnolia, um, you know, kind of along with other similar type of uh, old mansions. And then on the south side, it's the Western Reserve Historical Society. Next slide. Um, and here's the street views of those adjacent properties. Um, so the top left is for the left of our site, um, top right is to the right, and then the two on the bottom are across the street, the Historical Society. Next slide. And these are the photos of the existing buildings. Um, so there is you know, the mansion that I mentioned, and then there's also a carriage house at the back of the property. Um, so again, so the top left is the front, um, the top right is the east elevation, facing the parking, um, and then the bottom left is the rear of the house, uh, which is where we'll be at it, providing a new addition. Um, so that handicap ramp and porch that's shown there will be removed. And then the bottom right photo is facing the neighboring property. And then the three smaller photos on the left side are the carriage house. You can see the carriage house was previously um, repurposed for office space as well. Um, so the garage doors were infilled. Next slide. This is the proposed site plan. Um, so this kind of gives you a good overview and seeing kind of the four components of the project. Um, so we're really working to restore the existing house, um, providing a addition behind the house, which I mean, you can see in the site plan is smaller in width than the house so that it is, you know, from a street view, it would be completely obscured by the original house. And then the carriage house at the very rear of the property and then site improvements um, for the parking area. And the, you, you can also see the dash line. I'm sorry if you go back to the site for a minute. Uh, the dash line kind of shows the existing driveway um, that was directly adjacent to the house. Um, so we were proposing a new curb cut um, to you know, give more of a buffer between the house and the parking and also allow for two-way traffic um, in and out of the parking area. This is the first floor plan. Um, so the existing house will be utilized on the first floor primarily for conference space. Um, and again, restoring those to their Kind of original condition. The some of these spaces were you know previously split up into smaller rooms, um, so we're really opening those back up to get the kind of original spaces back. Um, then in the, the new addition at the back, um, this is going to be the primary entrance um, from the parking area. Um, so we've really tried to refocus the pedestrian arrival to the building. Um, then the other spaces will be used for offices. Um, and then at the carriage house on the right side, um, you'll see that's proposed to be an event space. Um, so that's not only just for UCI to use, but also for community engagement. Um, so that's uh, 50 to 60 um, person events that can be held there. Um, but you also notice there's a ramp there to provide accessibility to the um, existing house, the new addition floor will align with the floor of the existing house. Next slide. This is the second floor, which is all office space. Next slide. And these are renderings of the proposed addition and improvements. Again, the um, mansion will be restored, so we're proposing to 
you know, keep the existing wood windows and restore those to the original condition. And then you'll see this is kind of the view looking at this new curb cut into the parking area, which will be landscaped um, to provide screening to the parking. Next slide. This is going in a little bit further into the parking area, the view of the addition and the carriage house. Um, you know, putting in again new windows in the carriage house to match, you know, more of the historic character um, and remove the previous and fill those solid wall. Next slide. And this is a view kind of getting um, all three pieces. And I think the next slide has the side facing the neighboring property. I think that's all of our slides. And then I guess if you go back to the kind of the overview of the rendering, um, you know, our, our goal here was to really provide a glass connection between the addition and the house, you know, minimize the connection and disruption to the existing building, um, and then use compatible materials on the addition. So we are proposing a brick um, facade for the solid areas. And this is conceptual, so we don't have exact colors, but that's that's the intent. And we also wanted to create a, a more, uh, you know, modern uh, glass entrance because you know we're we're now the front door to this facility will be off of the parking lot. So Steve mentioned we're going to have a a narrow glass link that connects the old with the new, and then that glassiness will turn and wrap across the front of the addition facing the parking lot to make for a, a, a clearly delineated new entrance to the uh, UCI office office building. All right, does that conclude your presentation? Yep. All right, well, thank you for that presentation. Now, at, so at this point, this is concept, and has this gone to design review? Yes, it has, and um, Jessica was at that meeting. Um, she can summarize the, the comments from the committee there. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Dan. Um, the project uh, was reviewed conceptually by the Magnolia Wade Park East Boulevard Grantwood Allotments Design Review Committee on the 20th. Um, they were generally in support of the addition and changes to the carriage house. They did have um, comments on the uh, site improvements um, with concern on the loss of green space and screening questions with the parking lot, uh, the loss of a residential feel in the neighborhood, and uh, they did discuss the current use of space versus the proposed use of space uh, for the site. But overall, we're generally in support. Uh, this project is also scheduled to go to the PetBot review um, for a future meeting, and so they will at that point, um, discuss with the applicants the changes to the curb cut and impacts in the public right of way. All right, thank you for that report. And uh, can we have a staff report, please? Um, yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, staff is generally supportive, um, but we'd like to see more details on how the new addition would connect with the historic building. Uh, we also agree with the local design review committee that the site plan needs fleshed out a bit further. Um, but we'd expect to see that in the final review. So all in all, we think it's heading in the right direction and um, and are supportive. All right, thank you, Dan. Uh, with that, I'll open it up for comments from the commission. Mr. Edmund. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, yeah, I, I certainly would like to see more information about landscaping and, and see if there's an opportunity to perhaps reduce the number of parking um, spots. Um, I would like to talk about the architecture a little bit, and I, I see you, you know, you're, you're doing a lot of the architectural gestures that we often see in these additions, often right in this area to historic houses and so forth. And obviously you're picking up some of the materialities, the, the horizontal datum lines. And as you mentioned, you have a little bit of a glassier kind of gasket between the two to, to create a little bit of separation. You're acknowledging, but, but separating, and, and, and that's a very common approach and I, I see nothing really objectionable in that. Um, I might suggest that perhaps you could 
and I don't know if everyone else here would agree with me, but perhaps you could go further with some of the, let's say the, the glazed area, you know, maybe if, if you had smaller mullions, more of a, a full glass, maybe even mullion, mullionless system for that, that would, you know, that might look a little more modern, might give it a little more breathing space. Uh, looking at this, you know, I, I, I see a sort of, and I don't mean this in a derogatory way, but I see a sort of uh, 70s architecture in that updated and in some ways, because I think you're trying to to um, do that balance of accommodating but being modern. And, and I think you could still be deferential to the building, and I appreciate the way you've masked it and cited it. You could still be deferential to the existing building um, while uh, maybe having more light coming into the building, having more glass, having uh, lightening up the mass of it a little bit with some of your materialities. That's just a suggestion. Um, but I think uh, I, I think you maybe have a little more latitude perhaps than you're giving yourself to um, have that entry really be a, a you know, you're, you're trying to refocus the entry, you know, really do that. Let's, uh, um, let's emphasize that a little bit, Re give it a little bit more breathing space. Um, so, uh, those are my comments. Uh, like I said, I don't see anything really problematic here in the building. Um, but that will be just a, a design suggestion. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Edmund, Mr. Bernese. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm just going to continue Mr. Edmund's comments and that I think, um, you can give yourself the liberty to almost be more reductive because the articulation of, you know, even breaking down the mullions, breaking down things for span, it's just adding to an articulation that competes with the historic articulation that we're seeing to the left of it. Um, well, screen left in this instance. So I think particularly like having the freedom to almost be as reductively minimalist as possible might in a way help to celebrate what's very beautifully thought out and detailed, which is this wonderful um, historic building. And I particularly see that even in like the brick. So you, you have a glass volume that you're dealing with, and then there's a canopy, and then there's another brick volume. And I think giving the relief to even let those feel more graphic in a way, that they're a composition of visual elements rather than articulated architecture as we think about it. I'm, you know, I'm picturing like, I, I'm not going to say corporate people, glass people who often use very large sheets of glass. And then also, if you look at like um, the articulation of Thomas Pfeiffer and the way that he kind of creates these very delicately refined things, not to give you precedent, but um, I think that might help to detach us from the historic building in a way, in an effort to celebrate it, if that makes sense. Otherwise, I think it's a very, you know, the initial, the plans and the way that you're interfacing with the building are successful. I think the landscape poses to be improved. I mean, we always landscaping is continually improved as the design is always improved, but I think it's a great first start at the building. I think it's a great first massing at the building and that another stab at the articulation could really make this into a stellar um, intervention. So otherwise, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see where this goes. So thank you, Mr. Bernese. Thank you. Uh, any other commission comments? All right, I'll add a comment here that uh, when I first looked at this, so that Secretary of the Interior Standards says that the, uh, in addition to an historic structure should clearly differentiate itself so that it doesn't try to mimic the historic form, which I think you've accomplished here. But my first reaction, I think that my fellow commissioners have articulated this maybe more than I'll be able to, but uh, I just think that the parapet is too stark. So perhaps a solution to that is more glazing and less uh, masonry mass. But um, you're trying to differentiate the addition from the the building doesn't have to be as stark as presented here. So I don't know what the solution would be. Maybe some kind of a mansard or uh, just some corners. I'm, I'm not sure. Or just maybe more blazing as opposed to uh, the masonry, but uh, I just think that the, particularly the, the parapet, the roof line is too stark. That's my comment. Uh, seeing no further 
comments, does the applicant feel like you've received sufficient feedback so you can further your design? Yeah, we, we appreciate all your comments and think that they're you know well worth exploring. Yes, thank you. Right. Thank you very much. Looking forward to seeing this come back in the future. Thank you. All right, we'll move on to our next case. 23039 Little Italy Historic District, Cornell Road Residences, 2183 to 85 Cornell Road. Uh, first is demolition, and then related to that is the uh, new construction. These are just concepts. So uh, we'll deal with the, there's no vote. We'll deal with the, uh, Discussion of the demolition first and then the new construction. The applicant, please introduce themselves and tell us about your project. Yes, hi. Um, I'm Kevin Oliver with Oliver Architecture. Um, Carmen Amarino and Jeff Schoikit are the owners they're attending as well. Um, so, um, our project, as you mentioned, starts with the uh, demolition of two existing uh, two story homes located on the site. If you go to the next slide, um, it will show the existing condition survey. Um, so currently um, the site um, is treeless and has the front um, tree lawn essentially um, as concrete paved. Um, two existing homes that are not currently occupied, um, multifamily, um, not in, in good shape. Um, so step one is to propose to remove these um, structures to make way for the new project. Is it okay to describe the new project in its entirety and then discuss demo versus new? Um, on the, this is the photos of the existing conditions. So the top left shows the front of the two existing homes next to the recently completed Baricelli apartments um, and other contexts around the street as well. To the left is uh, random, and this is taken looking across Cornell itself. Um, to go to the next slide. Um, so this is the proposed site plan for the new project with um, the context around it. Again, Baricelli Apartments um, are on the bottom of the sheet from our site um, with our new proposed three-story building. And um, the building is located so that our drive areas and tucked under parking areas essentially face um, Baricelli's drive um, so that those two areas are inward facing and that lets us um, make the random road facade of the building more outward facing. So even though there is uh, the adjacent parcel and building there, it narrows up at Cornell Road so that, you know, effectively this facade is going to be the facade that faces random road. Um, so endeavoring to have that um, more of a facade of um, fenestration, balconies, activation, rather than parking um, and logistics type things facing that way. Um, we're matching the setback of uh, Baricelli Apartments for the building and um, proposing to, we would be reducing the curb cut um, that's there currently and providing a, a front lawn and landscape area and porch for the unit that is at the ground level there. Um, if you go to the next slide, please. Um, again, this is sort of at the ground level plan showing the parking that tucks under the site, um, as well as the uh, surface spaces, three at the rear of the site as well. Uh, next slide, please. So there's, there's 14 units proposed and 15 parking spaces um, over three floors. Um, so going through the community meetings and design review meetings, um, units, um, there's now a unit on the first floor that faces Cornell, has a porch, um, owns that, that sort of front yard area uh, consistent with uh, some of the surrounding um, buildings and neighborhoods with that multi-level front porch. Can you go to the next slide, please? Again, upper level floor plans and roof floor plans. Um, with the roof articulated with um, gables and um, you know, valleys and ridges, again, picking up on uh, some of the typical roof lines around the area. Uh, next slide, please. Um, and so the, the Cornell facing elevation is on the top left with its three-story um, 
masonry front porch, gable facing Cornell, um, and then the long elevations, the, the middle elevation is the proposed elevation that faces random, but the lower one is the inward facing elevation that has the tuck under parking there um, as well. So, um, you know, using the, the different roof lines to give a, a scale to the project, um, not, you know, not making it a, a singular um, roof line extending the entire depth of it, but uh, trying to, to keep those in scale and size and character as the rest of the neighborhood. Um, if you go to the next slide, please. Um, and so this, this elevation is, is taken along uh, Cornell, the Baricelli Apartments to the right, Wolfpack Chorus is the building to the left, and our three-story project in the middle. Um, we're proposing a fiber cement trim. It's, it's mislabeled on this drawing, but fiber cement siding as well, and um, brick. Um, when we come back for final, we'll have the um, actual specifications and uh, make a model for those. Um, but using that, that mix of materials to um, help be a part of the neighborhood, but also uh, give a sense of scale um, to our project as well. Um, next slide, please. And these are sections, you know, cut um, between our building and the Baricelli Apartments and, and uh, Random Road and then across Cornell, just to show the scale of our project and how its balconies and porches um, interface with the streetscape and the scale of, of each of those roads there. Um, so the, the bottom one um, shows, you know, our tuck under parking there. Um, and then again, even though there is technically a parcel um, on that bottom drawing to the left of us, we recognize that for the most part, that will be a facade that is visible. So we do have, um, you know, small porches on the lower level, balconies on the upper level uh, to give some outdoor living space as well as activate that facade. Um, next slide. Um, just some photos of, of other developments around the area, um, different mix of materials. Of course, Baricelli down on the bottom left is our neighbor next door. Next slide, please. And then this is the view if you were coming from Random, um, going up Cornell, looking at our project. So again, um, articulating some sort of a, a multi-level uh, front porch for those tenants. Um, balconies and a mix of materials on the random road facade and then uh, the varying roof lines um, that kind of go along the, the building, dividing it up into, you know, three sections of, of gables versus uh, monitor roofs, uh, shed dormers, that kind of a thing um, to, to help us um, fit in with the scale of the neighborhood. Um, so I think that's the last slide of the uh, design presentation there. Thank you for that presentation. We'll move on to uh, the design review report. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, these comments are from a previous iteration. So uh, they, it seems that they have taken into consideration some of the comments from the design review committee. Uh, demolition of the two buildings would leave only one contributing building on the side of the street. Um, there was vertical siding originally proposed, which was not appropriate for the district, and it looks like they have addressed that. Uh, it looks like they've tried to emulate porches in the area. Uh, consider shrubs to reduce headlights from the parking lot. They felt that the front landscaping is a vast improvement. Uh, what they saw, they felt that the gables were facing the wrong way, or consider a house or two townhomes faced, fronting on Cornell with apartments on the back, uh, considering two colors of bricks. Uh, bricks should be on the front on on Cornell. Uh, the windows, there was no trim, no depth. The window quality should help reduce noise due to the proximity of the train and other elements. Uh, there was some concern over the double driveway. Um, the committee seemed to be comfortable with the project, including the demolition here, but it needs to be the right project. Scale was too large. It was a four-story building that was being considered by the committee, so they have reduced that in height. Uh, scale is too large and too dense for the lot. The roof lines exaggerate the height. Um, they noted that apartment buildings have flat roofs and clean detailing. They asked for more information on the cost to renovate both buildings and uh, would like to see a salvage plan. Thank you. Thank you, Carl. And uh, staff report. Oh, we got them. Okay, we'll move to uh, 
public comment. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, we did receive uh, public comment in advance of this meeting from neighbors as well as notes from the Little Italy Block Club meeting that the applicants went to on March 9th. A summary of the public comments include a preference for owner occupied housing over rentals. Um, the existing building is located at a gateway of a district and should anchor or be an anchor over the Cornell Bridge. Um, comments included that the design was out of context for the neighborhood and provided insufficient parking. Um, comments on the uh, lack of green space, frustration with the process and abundance of developers, um, noted uh, preservation possibilities for the existing buildings. Uh, comments on a wish to have the design blend with the size, scale, look, and feel of the streetscape. Comments on um, that the buildings look too modern with large massing. And um, at that meeting, they did not look like a welcoming entrance to the neighborhood. Uh, demolition concerns on losing the original housing and um, general community and infrastructure um, impact concerns. All right. Thank you for that report. And now we'll move on to a staff report. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, talk a little bit about the history of this area. Um, Random Road was previously known as Brandon Road, and before that it was known as Prospect Street. Uh, should be noted that 2185 Cornell and the Baricelli House at the corner were the first two houses on this side of the street along with the four frame structures across the street. And at the end of 1898, beginning of 1899, JC and L.A. Davis purchased the rest of the lots, including those along Random Road, and constructed the rest of the buildings at this time. In 1929, um, you can see that the street was reoriented and there were some demolitions. This was for the introduction of uh, the expansion of the New York, Chicago, and St. Louis Railroad or the Nickel Plate Road. This was the view previous to the expansion with the Ohio Cut Stone Factory on the left. Part of this also was a little bit expansion of theirs in that time. This is a view of the house that was on the corner previous to that ex expansion. And you see that Brandon Road or Random Road was still straight at this time. During this expansion, uh, you can see that what was demolished, there's a few houses taken out and our other house that is still remaining is still there. So the two houses that were on the corner were removed. Um, this is uh, previous to the digging out or just at the same time they were demolishing those houses. They can move them. You can also see that the Ohio cut stone building is the second building is being constructed. That's now the uh, parking garage that's on random road that uh, still stands. Um, and as a point of interest, that is the facility where the guardians of transportation were carved uh, for the bridge. And another view prior to the digging out. You can see here's the trench being built. And then the finished product. And then this is what the southeast corner looked like two years later. Uh, these are what the houses looked like previously. Uh, we did conduct a site visit on March 15th. These two buildings have been altered significantly during their lifetimes. Their layouts are confusing. This is a picture prior to the Baricelli. Uh, apartments being put in because we had done a site visit as well. Um, there are extensive changes and they are not uh, conducive to redevelopment. While these are contributing structures to the historic district, their integrity, the economic viability, and the cost of restoration are working against retaining them. Staff would echo design review committee comments that we would be comfortable with new development here, but it needs to be appropriate in scale, massing, and materials. Uh, this would include introducing appropriate frontage on Cornell. When we were doing our site visit, this is uh, an image that we found on the wall that they had envisioned uh, turning this into restaurants. 
at one point, and we thought this would be an interesting share. Uh, staff is intrigued by the proposed design. We feel a new single or two family home with the massing and similar materials to existing buildings to front on Cornell would be a good nod to the historic district and keep an appropriate scale there. Um, the gable form could be appropriate as well because it reads as an extension of the existing buildings on Random Road. Uh, since they have lowered this height in one story, it does fit more into the massing of the Random Road buildings as well. Um, a tree preservation plan is not applicable. Uh, a stormwater management plan, and we would recommend a snow removal plan and uh, garbage removal plan as a part of uh, the final presentation as well. Thank you. All right, thank you, Carl. Uh, with that, I'll open it for commission comments. All right, I'll, uh, okay, Mr. Edmund. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. A um, couple of comments and a couple of questions. It, it does seem that uh, the applicant has been responsive to design uh, suggestions, which I appreciate. Um, a couple of other things, which I like that are going on here. I like the parking kind of tucked around back. Um, and I think the, um, if I'm understanding correctly, some of the changes to the massing and the, the roof lines, I think are helpful. Um, I, I like the multi-story porch uh, gesture, which we see a lot um, in that area. Um, I like that there's some landscaping. However, I think um, the landscaping could be further developed. I think this would benefit a lot from just some trees, um, and uh, so that um, could could have further development. Also, realizing this is only conceptual at this point, but I would echo the comment about the articulation of the uh, windows and um, and facade that, uh, you know, some further uh, further looking at that might uh, might really help um, contextualize it. I, I do have one question, which is about, there's the kind of notch out of the property in the adjacent building there, which I think that, is that the old Goose Acres uh, folk music place, I think? Um, so what's what's going on in that building? What's the relationship? It looks awfully tight there, particularly with the back corner of it. Just uh, what what's going on, kind of in that quadrant of your of your site in the adjacent property? Thanks. So the adjacent property is um, Wolfpack Chorus now. So it is that um, gabled building to the west of us on the top of the sheet, and then that it's uh, kind of a, a masonry building that is um, effectively tight to their property line it's, it's zero lot line there um, so that that is um, from our site that is a windowless box of their building on the adjacent site so they're not um, there's no outdoor use of their space there i believe it was an addition for the kitchen area of that building but i'm not 100 percent sure All right, does that conclude your uh, comments? Yes, thank you. All right, any other uh, commission comments? I'll just say to the applicant that uh, it looks like you've uh, responded to some of the design review comments and maybe some of the feedback that you received from the block club already, especially if you've lowered the structure by, uh, by one story. That's certainly significant and uh, improves the scale of the project relative to your neighbors. Um, as Mr. Edmund said, obviously this is fairly early in concept, but uh, refinement in the details with the treatment of the windows, I think that the, uh, I'd rather see different materials used on the front porch facing Cornell rather than that masonry, have it more of a uh, traditional porch look with uh, maybe round columns. Again, not not trying to um, project it as an historic structure, but uh, something a little more delicate than that masonry form is something that I would like to see. Ms. Anderson? 
Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I was in attendance at the site visit and, um, you know, walked through the houses, the uh, layouts and the overall uh, uh, design is not original. Um, they have been altered, but the houses seemed uh, well constructed and structurally sound, um, pretty weather tight, uh, and I, uh, I am really hesitant to dem uh, demolish uh, ex historic ex existing structures in a historic area. Um, I think uh, we uh, s can set a precedent when we have these um, homes on these larger lots that uh, they're worth more removed and demolished than they are uh, existing and uh, contributing. Um, I think if these homes were in a different area, you know, Franklin Boulevard Historic District, uh, West Clinton, uh, they would probably be uh, renovated and, um, you know, resold as a renovated single or two family homes. Um, the, uh, the asking prices, uh, is pretty substantial. It's uh, listed on the market for six hundred fifty thousand dollars. So, I, you know, I I think that reflects the unit. Um, I mean, the um, rent per bedroom in that area uh, because of the student housing. But uh, you know, uh, continuing on this path, we're we're not going to have owner occupant housing. We're probably going to continue to have the student housing, and you know, I. I know we just approved over 600 units for the sophomore dormitory down the street for the case. I just, you know, I just hesitate to keep going down this path. So um, I'm not supportive of the demolition. And uh, those are my comments. Thank you, Ms. Anderson. Uh, I don't see any other uh, commissioners with their hands raised. Uh, I also went on the site visit uh, at the site. And uh, just looking at the historic photos, you know, these were really handsome houses when the facade facing Cornell was intact. And that's been uh, totally compromised with the uh, renovations and modifications over the years. So uh, I personally don't think that these structures um, add significantly to the fabric of the neighborhood in their current condition and uh, going through the houses. I certainly want, wouldn't want my kids going to case and having to reside in housing like that. So, uh, again, it's, it's sad that you have to uh, lose some of the historic fabric, but I think it's been so compromised over the years that it doesn't contribute any further to the neighborhood. And uh, I can't imagine anything being salvaged. From what I saw in those homes, except maybe the uh, the stone foundations. Those are my comments. Seeing no other comments, does the applicant uh, feel like you have received sufficient input to further your design? Yes, absolutely. Um, thank everyone and staff for their comments and some time to review it. Um, looking forward to continuing the process and um, revising as needed. We're looking forward to it coming back in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, that concludes our uh, review of concept plans. We now have a uh, proposed nomination to the uh, National Register of Historic Places, Cleveland State University Tower, 1816 East 22nd Street. So is the is the applicant presenting here, or is it a staff presentation? Mr. Chair, I'll be giving a summary of the project, and then um, there are representatives from HP Group, which put together the nomination available to answer any questions at the end. All right, thank you, thank you. Jessica. Go ahead. Thank you. Um, so a bit of a summary. Um, the Cleveland State University was established in 1964 from the former Fenn College. Um, with the first class held in 1965, 
University Tower, um, which is more recently known as Rhodes Tower, um, had construction begin in 1968 and was fully complete in 1973. Building was dedicated in 1971 before the West Library Wing was constructed. It is 20 stories high and 493,968 square feet. The University Tower um, was the largest academic building ever constructed at Ohio at an Ohio Public University when it opened. Um, it was renamed James A. Rhodes Tower in 1981 in honor of Governor Rhodes' successful efforts to expand Ohio's higher education network through the 1960s. It exists in its original locations and setting that reinforces the significance of the property. Um, the tower is being nominated under Criterion C, having a distinctive characteristic of a type, period, and method of construction. The area of significance is education, and the tower is a successful example of the brutalism style and was designed by the Cleveland architecture firm Outcult Gunther Road and Bonebreak as a reinterpretation of traditional collegiate design. The campus setting re remains intact, as well as the building's role as the primary campus landmark. The distinctive exterior and interior architectural features, spaces, and circulation patterns of the stairwells and elevators remain intact. The brutalist style was used uh, to impart a sense of permanence and conveyed to the campus community and the community at large that the building and university would endure over time. The tower's placement in the 1960s was at the midpoint of an anticipated east-west um, campus limits and um, an projected student population of about 20,000 students. And that goal was finally achieved about four decades later. So as, um, as it's being nominated, the Tower continues to convey its significance as the symbolic and physical center of the Cleveland State University campus and retains integrity as a successful example of high rise brutalism style architecture in Cleveland. All right, thank you for that report. And so. Jessica, could you say that the applicant is present and. If so, are there additional comments with regard to this nomination? Hi, uh, good morning, uh, Richard Sika and Marsha Mall from Historic Preservation Group. Um, we are just here to answer any questions. The uh, nomination um, is being referred to you as part of the, the Certified Local Government Program, and it will be on the Ohio Historic Site Preservation Advisory Board agenda in June. All right, thank you very much for that summary. Uh, so I'll open it up to the commissioners for comments on this nomination. Okay, and I guess I'll start it off. You know, I think that this tower is fantastic. I uh, had the pleasure of being a participant in Project 60, uh, which provides free education to seniors uh, with, towards no degree. But uh, my wife and I both took Spanish at Cleveland State. And uh, so it was fun sitting in the classroom with underclassmen. And it uh, turns out that we were pretty competitive and wanted to get the highest grades in the class competing with these younger students. So, and we learned some Spanish. To move. It was uh, a wonderful experience. And I just think that, uh, you know, Cleveland State is a great asset and this structure contributes significantly to the campus and is a beacon really for that whole portion of the city. Uh, Mr. Benesi. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I won't go on because I have a whole architectural presentation and um, as a theoretician, I have, well, that's what I studied in college. That's what my specialty is, but brutalism has an interesting fondness in my heart, especially as we uh, approach now the 50 year mark for where it becomes a historic building style. Well, it's probably past 50, 70s. No, we're about 50. Okay. Um, I've been extremely interested in this building because I've always wanted to go inside. I'm not a student of CSU though, so I don't know if I can. But uh, every time I drive past it, I just imagine like what sort of interesting spatial features are inside of it. Um, so I'm very happy to see this on the nomination today. Um, if anyone can find a way that I can go see what this tower looks like, I would be most appreciative. Um, um, actually, if I could interject, you can actually just walk in. The the first floor, four floors are the uh, library. We'd certainly recommend the uh, waffle slab ceilings. 
um, as a good view in an interior um, atrium on another floor. And you could just take one of the elevators up to the, the upper floors. It's it's faculty offices at this point and other administrative offices. I, I don't think you'll get tackled from behind. You should. Oh, <laughs> brilliant. I, there was another, well, I often, as an, as an architect, I often find myself in places I probably shouldn't be trying to look at the building. <laughs> And it has gotten me into trouble a lot of times. So um, it's good to know that I know. I guess I should have thought about that as a public institution. It's often on private. Anyway, I like the building. I'm glad for the nomination. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Farnese. Any further commission comments? Seeing none, would someone like to uh, propose a motion in support of the nomination to the National Register for this structure? Mr. Redmond. I move that we support the nomination. I second yeah. that. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Not. Uh, Mr. Musson, please uh, call a vote and announce the results. All right, motion to support the nomination. Ms. Anderson? Yes. Mr. Benezzi? Yes. Mr. Kalikia? Yes. Mr. Dreyer? Yes. Mr. Edmund? Yes. Council Member Gray? Yes. Uh, Director Wong had to step out. Uh, Mr. Strickland? Yes. And Mr. Trasic? Yes. Mr. Chair, the motion passes unanimously. Thank you, Dan. That's great. Looking forward to uh, this, this uh, nomination advancing to uh, registration on the National Register. Yes, thank you. Have a, have a good day. All right. Thank you. All right. So we've got uh, minutes to approve March 11th, 2021, March 25th, 2021, March 10th, 2022, and March 23rd, 2023. So I'll just ask for a motion right up front and we can discuss if there's any. Um, Questions on these minutes after we get a motion. Can I have a motion to approve these minutes? Mr. Edmund. So moved. I have a motion. I have a second. This is Alan. I'll second. All right. We have a motion and a second. So is there any discussion on the motion to approve the minutes? For March 11th, 2021, March 25th, 2021, March 10th, 2022, and March 23rd, 2023. Seeing no discussion, Mr. Musson, please uh, call the vote and announce the results. Ms. Anderson? Yes. Mr. Benezzi? Yes. Mr. Clickia? Yes. Mr. Dreyer? Yes. Mr. Edmund? Yes. Mr. Member Gray? Yes. Mr. Strickland? Yes. And Mr. Trasic? Yes. All right. Thank you very much. Move on to administrative reports. Dan, do I have anything? Um, I don't have anything today unless Carl. do you? No, I, I do not have any reports from the chair. All right. Do you have business? any site visits coming up? That I'm aware of. We just conducted the one the other day. Yeah, I don't think there's anything. Oh, um, the Heritage Ohio announced their dates for their annual conference, which will be in Dayton in October, which are the 10th through the 12th. Unfortunately, the 12th is also our second Thursday, so we will have a meeting on that day. Um, but just for information that that will be coming up. Thank you. All right. Well, you you all uh, all the commission members also received a uh, copy of Facade Magazine from Clinton Restoration Society uh, that were delivered to the office here. So, if anyone would like to stop by and pick theirs up, we have them here. All right. Thank you very much. So that includes administrative reports. Uh, our next meeting is May eleventh. Call for an adjournment. Okay. 
Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you for sharing, Bob. Goodbye.